So before we owned it, um, the hub, I mean, there's, I've done research on this and I haven't been able to find out much about it, but I think the hub has actually been around for about 40 years or so in Katati. There's, um, we bought it 21 years ago, uh, but uh, we've worked, the guy that owned it before us, uh, I worked for him for about five years and then another guy owned it before that. And uh, we, so I don't know how long it's been in Katati, but uh, I know it's probably the oldest bike shop in Sonoma County at this point. I started working at the hub in August of 2006. It must have been five, about five and a half years ago, if that adds up. Um, I like working there because I, I love bicycles. I mean, I like to ride bikes. Um, I love to work on bikes. I love uh, helping other people enjoy bikes as much as I do. And they pay me for it, so it's pretty cool. You know, as the industry sort of grown and become a little bit more professional, um, we have changed and grown some to accommodate some of those needs, but we've also stayed the same to some degree uh, in terms of how we interact with our customers and the fact that we're still small enough that the two of us work on the sales floor or in the service department every single day. So those customers come in and sometimes I think I see a look of relief on their face that while everything else is changing around them, they can come into this place that they recognize and they recognize the people and it's still the same and you know they'll say that a lot of times they'll say wow it's so great to see you guys and you're still here and, and you know a familiar place while the freeway's growing and the businesses are changing and you know and they don't see as many familiar faces so it's it's kind of a comfortable place for them to come to and I think they feel a little bit of a tradition passing on you know bringing their kids in and and like Chaz says, very, very proud of the fact that they might have gotten their first bike from us and now they're bringing in their kids to do the same thing. Uh, so that's, that's really a nice feeling. So I, I like that uh, the shop is a little more of a community. I mean, I'm, I'm a little, it's, it's odd from my perspective because, you know, I'm there all the time, but I, I remember when I, before I worked in the bike industry, and before I lived in Sonoma County, and I'd go to my favorite local bike shop, um, one of my friends worked there, and I just always remember walking in, and, and it's just, you know, seeing the guys there that uh, I'd see every week or whatever, and it was, uh, having them know my name was cool, um, having them know what bikes I had, and kind of what the past issues I've had with stuff, I mean, it's, and then having, uh, you know, going on rides with them, it was just kind of a fun, uh, it's a fun community that you're that everybody's friends and that you have a, it's more of just a I mean it's it is a it's a business relationship to some extent but beyond that you know a lot of the people that come in our store um, we know their names we know their families we have a history with them Chaz and Claire especially you know go way back with a lot of the customers and um, now you know having been in the industry now for over five years I'm starting to get a taste of that you know there'll be people that I've seen coming in the shop for five years um, and I feel like I have a pretty good connection with them and have kind of seen their their journey through cycling you know they might have just started out um, and weren't a cyclist or didn't have a bike or anything and now you look at them and they you know they're riding uh, over 100 miles a week or they're they're way into mountain biking or they've gotten their whole family riding so that's that's cool I like that So uh, yeah, so we had overheard that uh, um, another bike shop was trying to move into Katati. Uh, they were a big, um, you know, at that point, a, a mail order company. But uh, <laughs> they, um, but anyway, so the gist of it was is that uh, they wanted to get some space that wasn't in the business dis district so that they could pay a little bit less in rent. And so uh, I was off doing a, a ride in Death Valley and. Claire single-handedly um, ran around Katati with flyers and uh, rallying the troops um, about how, you know, we didn't oppose another bike shop moving into Katati. We just felt that if another bike shop moved into Katati, it was would they they should be it should be a level playing field where they're paying the same rent. Um, and uh, 
you know, they have to abide by the same rules we have to with the number of parking spaces and everything. And so uh, that went to city, the city council had to vote on it. And um, we showed up um, very nervous about what was going to happen that night. Um, you know, we felt like it could be a turning point in our shop. And, um, and we sat there in the city council room with just the two of us and then the owner of the other bike shop and his lawyer. Or, and um, we, as the time came nearer and nearer to um, meeting time, uh, the place filled up and by the end of it, uh, it was standing room only and one person after another got up there and talked about how the hub cycery had, you know, brought them to Katati for business, how, you know, a, a woman uh, who, you know, Nancy, who rode her three wheel bike all over town, uh, talked about how she, you know, how would she be, if the hub cycle wasn't there, how would she be able to get across the freeway to this other bike shop and, you know, and everything. So it was really neat and they voted down their proposal and, uh, and we, uh, as we left the um, city hall, we had the line, the stairs were lined with everybody and they were clapping for us and then it was a pretty neat night. Yeah, it was neat to see the community come out like that yeah. and really support us. It, it was kind of night I think that a lot of people never get to experience because, uh, you know, we really felt appreciated by all those people and, um, you know, you you uh, got to hear people say some pretty nice things about us that yeah. might not otherwise have the opportunity to hear and, and uh, it was very heartwarming actually. You know, whenever I'm at a department store just for fun, I always go look at the bikes just to uh, kind of have a laugh and it's it's funny you know they a uh, very small selection of accessories to go with their bikes and then just the fact that uh, not only are the bikes you know of a pretty low quality but uh, they don't come in sizes uh, they don't oftentimes have any kind of choices as far as men's and women's or color choices um, and so it, it's fairly limited um, and uh, it's it's kind of funny that if you, if you stand there and, and stare at the bikes for a few minutes, um, I mean nobody will come by and, and ask you if you have questions or anything. And that's I mean it's not a bike shop. That's kind of to be expected. And I think when you go into any business that specializes in that one thing, for us being bicycles and everything that goes with it, um, you uh, you get much more attention to the smaller details of things, the kind of obscure accessories that. There might be one or two people that want them, but we have it. And um, we know every product in our store and um, most everything in the store we've used ourselves, um, with the exception for me of women's clothing. I've always seen it a little bit as it's a little bit of a struggle between this industry that's kind of grown up from these, you know, small independently owned businesses and merging with these corporate companies um, that there's a little bit of a clash and right now I think there's a little bit of a clash going on about who who's going to survive all of that and who's going to survive this new time when consumers are out there making different choices in how they spend their money still wanting the expertise of a small business like ours and people sometimes have no qualms about coming in and they'll spend an hour talking to you about something that's very detailed and something they don't know enough about and then they will thank you and walk away and then order that item online and still never make the connection between the fact that they they think in their mind they don't need you <laughs> when in essence they couldn't have done what they did without you or you're saving them at the final hour you know at 6 p.m. when they've got a race or an event the next day with all of the stuff that they bought online somewhere and now you're expected to adjust a headset or true a wheel you know or something like that so that they can go do their event and you've never even laid eyes on them before we are making changes in our society in our business climate if you will that very profound changes and we're not thinking about what the consequences are we're not thinking about ultimately what it means to our future or our future communities and the like and we're doing it fairly uh, rapidly um, and those are there may be no going back you know there may be no going back at all um, it's uh, uh, it's very common I find for people to say 
that they'll, you know, they'll, they'll go out to the brick and mortar store and they'll shop for something. And when they find a thing that they really like, then they'll order it up online because it's much cheaper. Uh, well, in the process, what they're doing is putting these businesses, these brick and mortar businesses out of business. And at some point, at some point there will be no, there won't be any place left anymore to go out and shop for something and then buy it online. So either our, either the way in which we shop and make purchasing decisions is gonna ultimately change profoundly in the process, or else we'll see a trans, a, a, some sort of a retrograde transformation in business, or some new, uh, some new business model that we haven't seen before, whereby local businesses uh, get created in a very different way that they that will allow them to compete against online retailers in ways that we probably haven't imagined yet. So I, I don't know if if we value the other kinds of things that small businesses give us, then we perhaps as a society could try to anticipate some of this and, and uh, uh, come up with ways to, to deal with it. You know, we have at least a handful of people, <clears throat> our own peers, you know, our own age group that have been coming in as long as we've owned the bike shop. And a lot of them will uh, talk about how many bikes they've bought and bought for themselves over the years and uh, and for their kids and all that stuff and um, <clears throat> what we see happening now is uh, we'll get uh, people coming in that are in their you know mid 30s and they'll bring their kids in and then they uh, I'll see them and I'll, re I'll remember them as a 11 year old or whatever and uh, and they're very proud you know it's they love to be recognized and then um, and then they just love, it's almost, they get to show off in front of their kids and they, they'll say, this is where I came to get my first bike and these are the folks that helped me out and now we're gonna get your first bike. And that's, uh, and that's really a, Of course, they always yeah. comment that we haven't changed at all. Yeah. <laughs>